Hi guys, and welcome back to my very first Art Thursday video. Um, just before we get started, this is my swatch page for the, what are they called? They're the like sweet, it's like the sweet creations. Here it is, I have the palette right here. They're called the, dec it's the Decadent Pies palette that was part of, I'll, I'll put in the text of what set I'm talking about. Um, but that was my swatch card for that. That's what it looks like when you complete a swatch card. Um, but I just wanted to talk about why artists do this, um, like what the importance of it is, and why I chose to do it for my Sakura Koi watercolors. So the Decadent Pies palette that I have is 12 colors. So it was 144 swatches if you really think about it. That's not too bad. It didn't take me too, too long. Um, I can't remember how long it took me to do that one. It, I think I completed it in like a couple nights. I think it took me like three nights. Um, and as you'll see with this video, I am one, two, three, four, five, like four and a half rows into it before I decide that I want to quit and just get this video done because I think there's enough content here for me to talk about why I did this. Um, but anyways, the reason why people do these swatch cards with their palettes um, is to like see the range of colors that they have. Because with the 12 color palette with the decadent pies and everything, it's a very, very warm palette with very warm colors. So as you could see in the beginning of the video, there are lots of browns and oranges and red tones and it's great. It's a great palette and everything. Um, but then towards the end and towards the edges, you can see that there are like teals and mint colors and all these different things that you can get out of it that I wouldn't have known unless I did this. So I have had the Sakura Koi travel watercolor kit that you can kind of see at the top of the screen. Um, I've had that for almost a year now and I like barely use it. I use my Tombos, unfortunately, more than I use an actual watercolor palette, and I am planning on investing in an, another water palette, watercolor palette, it's like the Mian palette, and if I do decide to do that, I will make a video all about it and everything. Um, but yeah, there, I've just had them for so long, and you can kind of see the paints, but further on in the video, you'll kind of see that like I haven't really used them, they're starting to crack. Um, they're starting to like get kind of old and everything and I want to be able to like, use them because I spent a decent amount of money <laughs> getting them. Um, but anyway, it shows you the range of colors that you have. So the way that I set up this swatch card is the side that is vertical. So the side that I'm painting right now, that side, is the dominant color in the box. So. Um, when you look at it and when you look at the mixes all together, you'll kind of see while I'm doing it. The color that is all the color that's along the left horizontal side, the left vertical side, I'm sorry, is is absolutely the dominant color. Um, and you'll kind of see that like with this one, you can kind of see it, but it's white, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, but you can see that I'm going in with the white first and covering the whole square and then adding a very, very little bit of the color that's coming from the top. Um, and that kind of shows me a, a little bit of a wider range of colors, a little bit of a wider range of this palette and everything because it bases it off of if one color, if the first color is really heavy versus if the other color is really heavy. Um, so that's one way to do it. Some people do it um where the square is the ones above the diagonal line are super saturated and the ones below the line are not as saturated it's kind of up to you um there's a way to do it if you have a really really big piece of paper or just a really small palette um there's a way to do it where you can do like the whole range of colors so like you could do like 50% like there you could do everything from like a hundred percent white and then adding incrementally the other color um, Yeah, there are different ways to do it basically is what I'm saying um, 
but it really shows you all of the colors that you have because when you look at the, the plain swatches from this palette, it kind of seems limited. There are lots and lots of warm colors. There are a couple different blues, three greens, three yellows, two oranges-ish, um, probably three. And then like, oh, there's no like true red in this. Like it's, it's weird. It's weird when you look at the swatches that I have in here. But when you look at a card like this, you, ha you can see the real potential of what this palette is capable of. And obviously like there are huge palettes. This palette, this brand Sakura Koi makes a 48, I think is their largest travel watercolor palette, travel meaning that um, it has this, it has like a mixing plate that goes on top and it fits in those holes in the, in the pan. Um, but yeah, they have like a 48 set too. I also think they have a 12. Um, but yeah, like you don't necessarily, like obviously those palettes are great, but when you're just starting out, you don't really need a bajillion colors. Like I've seen in like the last month of like what I've been learning and teaching myself about watercolors, it's that, yes, you can go out and buy 72 Daniel Smith watercolors and it'll cost you a, a ton. Um, or you can buy something a little bit more budget. These are, these I feel are very much, they're, they're way less expensive. They're pans. I prefer pans over liquid watercolors or tube watercolors, just so we're all aware. Um, but you can definitely get good quality stuff and you don't need to have every single color on earth. You don't need to have a bajillion colors when you can do a swatch card like this and you can have 576 different colors that you can make and you can use this in your art. Like you can, you can look at this and you can choose colors from it and you can mix those colors again because you know exactly where they came from. Especially in a palette like this where the colors don't come out and they're stuck in the order that they are, which is fine with me because I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I shouldn't. Yeah, it's fine with me. There are other palettes where you can move the colors around to how you want. I'm probably not going to move the colors around in the new palette that I'm getting just out of fear. Um, but in a palette like this where it's fixed, you can always go back and look and you can say, hey, I used white with the first green and it came out with this really nice mint color. Or I used white with... I don't know. I used white with that red and it made like a really nice salmon pink. I really want that salmon pink again. Well, hey, you know exactly how you mixed it. Um, I don't totally recommend what I'm doing right now, by the way. I do it for the rest of the video, I think. I just painted the whole row. Um, I painted the whole row with yellow and let it dry just a little bit so the colors wouldn't mix together and then I went in with the individual colors. I did that in sets of six towards the end in the parts that I uh, filmed this morning. But it's not, it's not the worst way to do it. It kind of does speed it up, but like no matter what, this is a tedious task and yes, there are 500 and whatever swatches to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just like, it's just a good way to gauge what your palette is capable of. And I do apologize for not completing the whole thing. I started filming this last night, and last night meeting Monday night, because my recording days are two days before my upload days. Um, I started filming this last night, and then I started filming it this morning, and I was like, I'm never gonna get this done. And I will complete it. It's definitely something I'm gonna complete because it's something that I will use in my art. Um, but I decided that I kind of wanted to give a desk tour, but that's kind of what I want to do for my studio vlog this week is give a tour of my desk and how it's organized and how it all works together because after two, almost two months of living here, I'm finally happy with how my desk is organized and everything. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just didn't want, yeah, like, I don't feel like you guys need to see all of it because you can kind of like, you can see that the top, um, the top left part is very, very warm, and the top right part is actually pretty muddy, to be honest. Um, sorry, I'm a little stuffy. <laughs> um, but the top right part is muddy, and that's because something that I learned from watching YouTube videos about watercoloring is something, like, I feel like this is something I should have known, but <laughs> um, I learned that 
some colors just don't mix well together. Like you have to have a blue that is tilted towards green. Tilted is the word that I use. I don't remember the word that was in the video. But you have to have a blue that is oriented or tilted towards green and a yellow that's tilted towards green to make a green that's not muddy. And I actually didn't know that. And that's something that I'm really glad that I learned because like I mess that up all the time. I make all these ugly muddy colors and I never knew why. Like yellow and blue should make green and red and blue should make purple. But like, why is it so muddy and gross? But it's because you have to have colors that or oriented towards your goal color. So you have to have a red that's or that's oriented towards orange and a yellow that's oriented towards orange to get orange when you mix them together and to not get something ugly. So it's actually really helpful with that as well, especially if you're not the greatest at telling which way the colors are oriented. For the most part with this palette, I can tell. Um, but with some of them, honestly, like it's a little bit surprising. The first yellow, I knew it was definitely oriented towards green more than orange, um, but it definitely make it like it's not horrible when you mix it with uh, with red and stuff. It's just like it's a little bit muddy, a little bit like they don't agree with each other. Um, but that's the benefit of having three yellows in a palette and one yellow that's very very much oriented towards orange. Um, but it's kind of cool and interesting to see how. A color leans a certain way so that's another reason to do this and I'm just rambling on and on and on because <laughs> this video is so long I sped up these clips 600% so six times as fast <laughs> and it's so satisfying honestly to like watch me paint this fast but this is so tedious like you can see me texting people on my phone and <laughs> I've been watching Adam Ruins Everything. I'm about to finish it, actually. I'm watching the 20th part. Um, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just like so distracted. And that's <laughs> that gift that I sent to my mom. Um, sorry. It's a yeah. Anyway, um, I was just like, I don't know. It felt like it was going to take forever, and yes, it's going to take forever. It's 576 swatches, I believe, was the number that I came up with. Um, but it's worth it in the end, especially considering the fact that like these palettes, like, they're cracking. The paint's cracking, and I'm not happy with that. It bothers me so much that the paint is starting to crack and get old and get, like, I don't know. None of them have really changed colors since I bought them. But I'm kind of worried that that's something that's going to start happening, like they're going to start to kind of go bad. Um, so I really want to use them, and I want to use them in my art, and I want to use them in my new stuff, and my commissions and everything. But I want to know their full potential as well, because this palette, like I said, isn't like a super expensive investment. It's not cheap, like no paint, no quality watercolor paint is going to be cheap. But this was like a not super insane investment. And I actually really like this palette because you can just like throw it in your bag. And I don't have the plug for their watercolor brush, but the way that the brush is designed, it's designed to fit in that well that you can see in the front of the palette. And sorry, so stuffy. Um, it's designed to fit in the well of that palette and it has a plug to cover the side of the brush that has the water in it. So you really can just like take this palette and go. And one thing that I didn't know, I was watching, I think, Casey Gordon's video or somebody's video that the top part, the lid, you can actually use as like a painting surface. So, so what people do is they'll stick like paint or paint, they'll stick paper in it and they'll put tape in it so you can like remove the paper and stuff. Um, so you can like use that as like an easel kind of deal. It's better with the 48 set because it's bigger, but... I didn't know that you could use that end as an easel, but like, now I'm rambling about Sakura Koi <laughs> watercolors. They're really nice. I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're not like super expensive. They're not like the best of the best watercolors, but they're perfectly fine. And they come in at least 48 colors, probably more than that, to be honest. I can't remember. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I've just been rambling and <laughs> rambling. Um, but anyways, for a quick second, let me talk about my schedule. 
So my new schedule with YouTube is to not upload on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and upload the other five days. I'm starting to, I have a filming schedule for myself too and that filming schedule is two days before the video has to go up because I'm a forgetful person and if I don't do that then I probably will forget to upload that video or I'll forget to edit it or something so I'm kind of trying to like get in the groove of filming on this day and getting it up and having two days in advance of footage and stuff to put up on YouTube so that I'm not like super screwed up. Um, the only disadvantage with that is that I don't have a single day off from YouTube and Twitch. Um, every single day I'm either filming or streaming and there are one, two, Friday and Saturday I'm doing both, which kind of sucks. Um, filming's definitely not as bad. Um, yeah, filming is fine. I don't mind doing that. I'll probably end up like doing a couple of videos in advance, but like those are like my due dates for videos and stuff. Um, and then I'm still streaming five days a week. Um, Mondays, Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday nights, and then Friday and Saturday in the morning, if you're interested. Um, I will do art streams. I just don't wanna, I don't know when yet. I can't figure out when I wanna put them in. Um, but I definitely wanna do like live painting streams and stuff once I figure out like a, a good system to do it with because my system right now is not the greatest. <laughs> um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm sorry for rambling for this long about watercolors and random things. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Bye!